Thank you. Um, an unusual time to be alive. Rarely do people live in a time when culture is collapsing at the same time that nature is unraveling. A rare time to be alive. Although one thing about myth and uh, traditional people is most things have happened before, it just happens differently each time. So I want to tell a story that addresses uh, this kind of period that we find ourselves in, but the beautiful song made me think I really have to start with the song. This is a song from the Dagara tribe, Burkina Faso. This is the song they sing when they realize we need elders, that the world has gotten hard and we need the wisdom that elders that can, bri can bring. Of course, we need the dreams of youth and the energy and courage of youth, but the combination of youth and elders is what transforms culture. And so this is the song that they sing when they want to call the elder up. And of course, the elder or the sage can appear in anyone because it's an aspect of the heart and the soul and not an aspect of age. It goes like this. Azizona is a makuli. Azizona. Tesamani barna azisona eze makuli azisona temamani barna azisona the world has gone wrong eze makuli somebody take us home Zisona, the realm has gone wrong. Tesamani Badana. We're losing our fathers. We're losing our mothers. And by father and mother, they don't mean our biological preceding people. What they mean is father means grandfather, grandfather means sage, mother means grandmother, grandmother means wise old woman. We're losing the wisdom. <clears throat> that people need to survive the hard times. And so, when it feels like the wisdom is no, no longer conscious or as present as it should be, people know that whatever is important that gets lost doesn't disappear from the world. It falls back into stories because story means storehouse. And what we have forgotten or not yet learned is waiting to be found again in the storehouse of stories. And this is an old story told by a number of tribes in what we call North America when things start to go wrong. Are you ready for a story? They say all people are looking for knowledge because it's natural for humans to seek knowledge. And they say that there's a place where the exact knowledge that everybody's looking for can be found, a cave, a cave in which knowledge is stored. And they say, even though it's nearby, and even though there are roads going in all directions, highways and super highways and back road trails, and even though people are driving north, south, east, and west in cars day and night, they don't seem to find the cave where the knowledge resides that people are looking for. And they do say, should you find that cave, what you would see inside the cave is an old woman. And the old woman is in the cave and she's weaving and she's weaving the most beautiful garment that anyone has ever seen. And she's been weaving it for a long time. And she wants the hem of the garment to be particularly beautiful. And so she's weaving the hem of porcupine quills. And in order to prepare them to be woven into the hem of the garment, she has to bite down in order to flatten them. And she's been biting down on porcupine quills for so long she has worn her teeth down so that there's nothing left but nubs barely appeasing, appearing above the gums. But still, she keeps biting down on the quills and weaving them into the hem of the garment. And every once in a while, 
you have to go to the back of the cave. And at the back of the cave, there's a fire. And some people say that fire is the most ancient thing in the entire world. And over the fire, there's a cauldron. And in the cauldron, there are the seeds of all the flowers and all the bushes and all the plants and all the trees and everything that grows from the heart of the earth. And if she doesn't go back and stir the cauldron full of seeds and the seeds will burn. And if they burn, then we won't have plants and we won't have vegetables or flowers or trees. And so she gets up every once in a while, puts the garment on the floor of the cave and goes to the back of the cave towards the fire. And because she's old, and because she's been weaving that garment for so long, she moves slowly. And as she slowly goes to the back of the cave, the black dog, what black dog? The black dog goes over to where the garment is now laying on the floor of the cave. And the black dog sees a loose thread. And what can you do? It's a dog. It's a loose thread. The black dog takes the loose thread and begins to pull on it and keeps pulling until the entire garment has been unraveled. And so nothing is left but a chaotic mess of threads on the floor of the cave. And then the old woman comes back from stirring the stew of seeds. And when she comes back, she sees her long labor of love and creativity unraveled into chaos on the floor of the cave. And so she stops and looks at the chaos in front of her. We don't know how long she looks, long enough to consider that she has to do something. And so she sits down with the weaving again. And she sees a loose thread. And she picks up that loose thread. And as soon as she picks it up, she sees a vision of an even more beautiful garment than the one she had been weaving before. And she begins to weave that garment. And as she weaves it, she knows this is the most beautiful garment that anyone has ever seen. And the elders tell their story when everybody begins to worry that the world might come to an end. They tell the story when everything goes upside down. They tell this story when the wrong people get elected. They tell this story when everybody begins to fear the climate crisis. They tell this story when everyone realizes we're in this together and we're not sure how to get out of it. And some people say, damn that black dog. If it wasn't for the black dog, the old woman would finish the beautiful garment and everything would be perfect. And the elders say, be careful what you wish for. Perfect means to go through the form. Perfect means death, that all the forms are over. In this world, perfection never arrives. And those who seek it often wind up isolated and alone like that man who wanted to find the perfect woman. And every time he met a woman, he went, well, not tall enough, not smart enough, not beautiful enough. And finally, he found the perfect woman. And she looked at him, and it turned out she was looking for the perfect man. And she moved on, and he was left alone. Don't seek for perfection. What we love in each other is the imperfection. That's why ancient people used to leave one part of a rug imperfect, one part of a clay pot unglazed. In this world, it's enough to be alive. It's enough to have a dream. It's enough to see a vision. And now we are like that old woman. We're sitting or standing there, looking at it all unraveling before our eyes. And in a sense, we have to be the witness of that kind of thing. If we don't look, we are turning away and not being in the world in a full and meaningful way. On the other hand, if all we do is look at the unraveling, we can find ourselves falling into overwhelm and despair. So what we have to do is like the old woman, pick up the thread that is in front of us. For it's called the thread of the soul, the thread of one's genius. And the idea when the world has gone wrong is not to try and save it through some kind of heroics. For instance, when someone wanting to gain power says, I'm the only one that can fix it. When you hear that, you vote for the other people. 
It's possible that heroicism is what got us into the mess to begin with. The old people say, just look for the thread of life, which they used to call the thread of genius. And the Irish have a story, they say, when the center falls apart, as it inevitably does, what was in the center doesn't disappear, for in this world, meaningful things don't disappear. They just become harder to find. And the Irish people say, the ancient Irish anyway, they say when the center falls apart, then all those things that made up the center go to the edges and the margins of life. And they say, if you go looking for the darkest margin or the darkest place, if you go there, you will find a thread. It's the thread you were supposed to find. It's the thread that you can pull. And if everyone just picked up the thread of their own genius, the thread of their own being, and began to pull those threads back towards the center, then like the old woman, we would begin to see the beautiful garment of the world again. And all we would have to do was pull our own thread and weave all our threads together. That's what the ancient people say. Don't try to fix the whole thing. Don't try to solve it and don't expect that you will find the answer you're looking for in the light. If it was in the light, it already would have been found. When we're missing something, it's in the dark. And so the ancient people say, all light comes from darkness. All knowledge comes from standing at the edge of whatever we know. If we knew it, we couldn't get any more. We have to stand in the places we, where we no longer know, where we distinctly do not know. And then the answers come from unseen places. If only we have the courage to face the dark, whether it's the dark inside or the dark outside. That's what they say. And me, I'm sticking with the old stories because it's the old stories that continue to live, that have in them the wisdom that's missing and have in them the deep courage required to face the unknown. And it's the unknown that is holding the answers when we come to the edge of what we know. At least what, that's what the old people say. And me, I'm sticking with them. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We're clapping because we know that thread of genius is part of us. So, just to connect us to some other things. Um, in ancient India, they have many myths of the beginning. I was once at a conference where people were telling myths and stories, and someone said, I'm going to tell the original version of creation. And I said, excuse me, original and version have opposite meanings. <laughs> so please go ahead, but understand we see what you're doing. The world is so multiple and magnificent, there has to be many origin stories. Most cultures have more than one. Even Christians have more than one if you read the Bible carefully. But in ancient India, some of the stories involve prajapati. Praja, praja means being. Pati means Lord of, but it can also mean lady of, Lord or lady of being. And so there's a story about Prajapati making the world as a sudden arrival of abundance from inside and the pressure of the abundance came out as the mountains and the waters and the trees and the lakes and, the, and all the growing things and it came out as all the beings, the birds and the fish in the water but also the insects that are essential to keep everything moving and living. And all of this came out of Prajapati and it was beautiful and it was wonderful but after it came out, Prajapati suddenly, the one who created everything, he or she suddenly felt empty and alone and then felt fear and felt longing and felt concern and anxiety at the beginning of things. And then Prajapati having another instinct, not waiting for something to rise up, him, herself, went down deep into the self, into the soul, and then began to make the world again from loneliness, from grief, from loss, from anxiety, all those things we think shouldn't be there 
came there from the very beginning. They're part of the world. And so when the world rattles and seems to be falling apart, we have to go like the old lady quietly in the cave, quietly down into the depths like Prajapati to the depths of the self or soul because what is lost is waiting to be found there. And if we trust it is there, we can find it and bring it up. And when enough people bring it up, we begin to transform the world. This world doesn't just need to be a better world. We need to have a better world view in order to improve and heal it. So there's not much time given at this moment for creation, which we were working on there together. I'm just kidding. But uh, sometimes you have to create quickly and get the hell off the stage. But, um, but here's an idea that to me is in the story. It's in both the stories. Um, we are participating, living in, about to live through a collective rite of passage, whether we like it or not. The world that we used to think was the world is already gone. The world that the world is going to become has not appeared yet. And so to imagine that it's a collective rite of passage in which if enough people transform and become an authentic version of themselves, having the capacity to pull their thread, we can participate in the healing of nature, of the reimagining of culture, and then we can leave a world that is markedly different from the one that has already really expired in many ways. We're invited to do that. In a way, we are the old woman looking at everything falling apart looking to find our way to contribute to creation, which is not something that happened a long time ago. It's happening all the time. Creation is ongoing. And when we find our way of being in the world, we become agents of ongoing creation. And this is the time to do that. And I had mentioned the elders and the youth. They say a culture falls apart when its youth are rejected and its elders are forgotten. A culture reimagined, remakes itself and rebalances itself with nature when the dreams of the youth are brought and welcomed and the youth are welcomed for being the geniuses that they naturally are and when the elders are remembered and then they begin to remember themselves and the elders grow older but they grow wiser and they actually go, grow younger. In the end, the elders find the eternal dream inside themselves and that youthfulness keeps them going and in the meantime, the young people find the hidden sage in their hearts and that gives them direction and purpose and aim and then those two working together begin to make the next world which is trying to appear. So one more idea. This is not a heroic project. We don't have to imagine it and go make it detail by detail. We don't have to go all the way. The world that wants to be renewed is trying to get to us also. The old stories say all you have to do is go far enough and then the unseen world, the other world, the world of creation, the world of imagination comes to meet us. And that meeting is how it uh, arrives. But in order to get there, we have to walk through the unknown, undetermined space in between the collapsing world and the world that's trying to be born and trying to be found by us. That's what the old people say. And so I'm watching. We're down to like a minute. <laughs> what do you do when there's only a minute left in the world? Makuli. <laughs> Zisona. All right, oh, here's the clap. It's here. It's here. No, no. Okay, wait. You got to get the clap. Stop, please. Stop. Here's the clap. There, 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 there. there. Zisona is a makuli. Zisona. Mamani Badana Azizona Eze Makuli Azizona Te Mamani Badana Azizona Te Mamani Badana Azizona <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.